Hi, I'm Audrey, the host of My Tar Heel Adventures. Every Friday, we visit a new city in North Carolina to give you an inside peek at our beautiful state. Today, we're in Fuquay Arena. Our first stop will be at Aviator Brewing Company, and then we'll head over to Horses for Hope, and then our final stop will be at the Fuquay Arena Art Center. So stay tuned for an all new My Tar Heel Adventures. Hi guys, we're here today at Aviator Brewing Company and we're with the owner, Mark. So excited to be here in Fuquay Arena. Can you tell us a little bit about how you started Aviator Brewing? Sure, I love beer. And uh, when I was 16, I started drinking beer. A neighbor of mine, I was living over in Holland, he brewed beer and he showed me how he brews beer and we started brewing beer together. Fast forward 20 years, I'm in the United States. I bought an old airplane hangar. Uh, I built an airplane from a kit. Uh, it was really small and the airplane hangar was huge. So I decided to uh, put a brewery in the airplane hangar. So I learned to weld. Uh, I welded this whole brewing system back together. I started brewing beer and I started selling beer. I love food. I love barbecue. I love smoking meat. I mean, who doesn't? So uh, I built a barbecue restaurant and we started smoking meat. We started making beers that kind of paired well with the food. And then things kind of progressed and we had the opportunity to get another location and make some pizza. And we're working on a new brewery. Wow, okay, so what is your inspiration for all of this? Uh, you know, it's pretty simple. I just love beer. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not complicated. I love beer, love food. I mean, the two things just kind of came together. I mean, we had the opportunity to be in this beautiful town. And these old historic buildings are just awesome. Just to let you guys know here in Fuquay Varina, they actually have two downtowns and we're more so on the Varina side. How have you seen this area change, especially since your businesses? Uh, Fuquay Varina over the last 20 years, is the, the change is incredible. So it went from kind of um, sleepy downtowns to the area just exploding. I think people discovered what was down here in Southern Wake County. It's just a lot of great history, a lot of great people. The downtowns, the buildings are just so cool. I mean, to turn something like that into a bar or restaurant, the character and the history of the town is preserved. People get to come in and see it. They're not just abandoned buildings or they're not retail stores. People come in and drink beer in these buildings. It's fun and exciting. But we've seen a huge amount of people just kind of move to this area from out of state and it gives our town just really cool, unique character. So Mark, what is the future for Aviator Brewing? So we don't do a whole bunch of planning, um, <laughs> but we do have a really cool project underway right now. So we're building this awesome beer entertainment experience, I like to call it. So we're building eight bars. We have three restaurants going in. We have a coffee shop. We have an outdoor concert venue. We have an indoor concert venue, a distillery. We were lucky enough to buy the C-54, which is a World War II airplane that was in the Berlin airlift yeah. uh, after World War II. And we're gonna take this airplane and put it on the property and develop that into a bar. So it'd be kind of a, a cool, kind of encompassing um, environment that we've always wanted to create. We never really wanted the brewery to be just an industrial site. We wanted it to be an area where families and people would come and drink beer and watch a concert and have a good time. You said you don't make a lot of plans, but when it comes to making that C-54 into a bar, yeah. are you gonna go with that World War II theme? Yeah, that, that's definitely the plan. All right. So we'll have a World War II theme inside the airplane. Uh, we'll have a lot of the history of the plane in there. People can read about it and kind of experience it, which would be fascinating. I think it'd be cool. That is gonna be amazing. Yeah. Where can we find your uh, brewing company and your restaurants on social media? So the best place to go is aviatorbrew.com. Um, on Facebook, we're at Aviator Brewing, and we're on all the other Twitters and Instagrams also, but I forget all that. All right, <laughs> sounds good. Thank so, you so much. Thank you. Hi guys, we're here at Horses for Hope and we're here with Chris, Julie, and Whitney who help run Horses for Hope. Can you guys tell us a little bit about Horses for Hope and what you do here? Yes, we were founded in 2003. We're in the Fuquay Varina area, south of Raleigh. We were founded by a lady named Gwen Roberts. She has a heart for the special needs community and she saw how good horses were for people with special needs how they help people with all kinds of disabilities. They're good for their heart, their body, and their soul. So she founded Horses for Hope 
and we also offer standard riding lessons able-bodied. Can you tell us a little bit more about your therapeutic program? Our therapeutic program we have right now probably about 200 people on our wait list. Wow. Before COVID, we were able to do a lot of free therapeutic riding for the, especially for those who really met the need, you know, because special needs people really, 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 their pockets are just so small because it takes so much for them. So we will give it to them for free. However, because of COVID and the expenses of everything, we've had to go and ask them to volunteer so many hours within their 10 week program. But my son, he is severe autistic. He started here in the therapeutic program. He came in and we put him on the horse the first day and about halfway through the program, Gwen and Tony, um, they asked me, they said, does he speak? And I'm like, yes, he has speech therapy. He's had physical therapy and occupational therapy. And they mm -hmm. said, okay, well, we're gonna make sure to get him to talk now. So the next week they started asking questions and made him answer. And now today, now that's almost 10 years ago, he now rides an independently in a standard lessons. And he is a social butterfly. He, can go, he will go over and he'll go and help Julie and the authors and go and uh, scoop poop and all that lovely stuff. He just loves it and he loves the horses. So yeah. therapeutic riding is such a big, Deal. It really, people with PTSD, they come, you know, can groom the horses and it just gives them a connection. You know, the horses are just a gem and they are worth every penny that we have. Wow, that is amazing. That's a testament to how amazing Horses for Hope is. And you guys also are looking for volunteers. Whitney, can you tell us a little bit about that? So we are looking for some volunteers and we could use people that can just come out once in a while or people that are like looking for a opportunity to do something regular, right? But we have the therapeutic riding program where we usually need at least one volunteer per horse, sometimes two, to help keep them safe. We also have volunteers that we need for ground maintenance, keeping maintaining the postures, we need some help with fundraising. Folks that want to come out and, you know, maybe maybe being with a horse is intimidating. That's not their thing. They don't want to get dirty. I, you know, it's it's a farm. <laughs> but just like, you know, doing some of the backside of things, like clerical work and kind of keeping up with like newsletters and that kind of thing is an opportunity. So we have lots of opportunities for folks to come out and give us a hand. Volunteer at horsesforhope.org is the email address for us. And if you're interested, we can definitely find a role for you. And there's no age too old, no age too young. We'll find a role. Sounds good. Now, Whitney, I do have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have to be trained with horses or can you just, you know, just be interested in getting to know? Fantastic question. A lot of our volunteers that work directly with the horses have either ridden when they were small children or maybe like when they were a young adult, but you don't have to have any training. I had no training with a horse other than a few <laughs> times that I rode and I was like, hi. Don, you want to train me? And one of the instructors said, yeah, come on in, I'll show you how. And so now here I am, you know, a couple years later, I'm running the show almost with the volunteer side of things. Would this be a good opportunity for families to come here together? With the small children, we just ask that the parent stays, you know, engaged with their child to make sure that they're safe. And small kids, we're not going to necessarily have them, you know, leading a horse per yeah. se, because it's just not safe because of their size. Yes. But, you know, we definitely need people to muck stalls, fill water buckets, and, you know, just help spruce things up. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a great environment for a family. Sounds good. And do you guys have any upcoming events? And if not, where can we find you on social media to learn more about your organization? We have an event coming up um, in November, um, I want to say the day after Veterans Day, is that right Chris? Yes. Um, it's going to be a day of giving back for first responders actually. It's for them and their family to just come out, enjoy their horses, um, do some pony rides, do some trail rides, and it's completely free for them so they don't have to, you know, come out and shell out any money. We just want them to come have a nice relaxing day and enjoy some time with the horse and just take their mind off of things and have a good experience. Uh, we're on Facebook. Well, on Twitter, basically, it's Horses for Hope Raleigh is the most part. We do have a small presence on Instagram. Uh, we are looking for somebody to kind of take that over for us. I'll come out, take pictures of the horses and, you know, put out little blurbs of when we're doing things and stuff like that. And we also need to have land. If anybody out there knows any, any place here in Wake County, preferably have about 
30 to 50 acres and if they would love to donate any tax write-off that would be fantastic if we could do that but we have only four years left on our lease so we really need a, you know a home for these horses um, and be able to continue this therapeutic riding program so we would really we really need to help there sounds like that's some very important i hope you are able to find what you need as far as volunteers and land thank you guys so much thank you Hi guys, we're here at the Fuquay Marina Arts Center and we're talking with the Arts Program Coordinator, Jennifer. Can you tell us a little bit about the Arts Center? So the Arts Center has been here since 2019. Um, we have programming for preschoolers all the way through seniors. We have visual arts classes, we have after school classes for kids to come and make art in our uh, painting studio. We have classes for seniors to come and do pastels during the day. We have crochet club that meets once a week that just gets together and crochets. We have dance programming for everybody and anybody that wants to do contemporary, tap, hip-hop, jazz, ballet, all the things. I'm not sure if there's one we don't do, but a little bit of everything. So, and then outside of the classroom spaces, we have things in the theater. So we have musical performances, community theater performances, musicians, comedians. We have a juggler coming, lots of different opportunities. We have school programs, traveling dance programs, traveling community theater, lots of so it sounds like you have something for the entire family to do yeah. and enjoy. That is so cool. Can you tell us about any upcoming events that you have? So next Friday we have Marcus Anderson. He's a saxophone artist. He has eight albums of his own. He's played with Stevie Wonder, Prince, CeeLo Green, all giant names. He's gonna be fantastic. He'll be next Friday the 23rd at 7.30. And then after that, the next week is Celebrate, which is a town event. So all of downtown turns into a festival for to celebrate Peak Wave Arena. We'll have an artist village at that event on Raleigh Street just behind us full of local um, art makers that uh, everything's homemade, everything they've done, um, which is great. So wonderful event. There's uh, games and rides for the kids. There's uh, sponsor tents, there's music, there's beer garden, food trucks, face painting, all the things. And then the next week we actually have Mark Neiser, which is a two o'clock performance on Saturday. Um, and he'll be a juggler and he's a 4D juggler. So you actually wear 3D glasses while wow. he juggles and there's lights and it's a whole bunch of fun. That sounds so cool. Sounds like you guys have so many cool events coming up and we want to find out more. So where can we find you online and on social media? So our website is fbarts.org and we're on Facebook and Instagram. Check us out, we've got lots of stuff going on. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Yeah, wonderful. It's a pleasure. Yeah. Thanks for watching the video. Be sure to hit the like and subscribe button and turn on those bell notifications to keep up with all of our adventures. Now I'd like to thank Gator Metal Roofing for sponsoring today's video. Let's check in with a recent customer to see how their experience was. What was your experience like with Gator Metal Roofing once you decided to call? It was excellent. Expeditious, as soon as we called them, they came out, gave us the estimate. A couple weeks later, we're right here. How quickly was Gator able to get you scheduled once you called? It was about three weeks. They came and gave us a quote when we entered the information on the website. Then they call you and, yep, we're going to come up on such and such a day. And then they gave us the quote and then we decided on the color. And then a couple weeks later, we started the installation process. What do you like most about your metal roof as opposed to a traditional roof? It's a one-time replacement. And then for the rest of my life, I won't have to worry about it. All roofs are different. Mine has a lot of valleys and a lot of innuendos around it that just make it a unique roof. And so there's, for the roofing guys, there's a lot of work that they have to do a lot of custom cutting in order to get everything to fit. And so being able to see that helps you make your decision because then you can look at it and say, well, mine's not as complicated as that. And so far, are you happy with the process? Yeah, we're not done yet, but yes. Getting your new energy efficient Gator Metal roof is as easy as a one, two, three.